At least we can edit that out. Yeah. Or I can bet it as the bloopers. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Are you okay? It's sooner than not looking yet. Our transitions are transitioned. Hi, everybody. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Broken to Blessed. We are the Blended Family Marriage Coaches. Here we are. We try to answer your questions and how they relate to your blended family marriage. So that's who we are and what we do, right? That's right. So the next couple of episodes, we're going to be talking about boundaries. Boundaries. Dun, 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 dun. It always sounds like such an ominous message, but it's really not. It's a healthy thing to have in all relationships, but yes. we're going to talk about it specifically, how it will apply to your blended family marriage. Yes. So stick around for the next couple weeks. We'll talk about boundaries in your blended family marriage. Exciting stuff. Exciting stuff. Last week, we talked about um, the nacho parenting method. If you want to see that video, click. Usually it ends up right on Dwayne's head, so <laughs> click right there, but let's jump right into boundaries. Boundaries are fence lines, for lack of a better word, to put around every relationship that you have. I read a quote one time and it has just stuck with me. I wish I could quote the original quoter, but they say that if you say a quote enough, often enough, as long as you give credit the first couple times, the next couple times it can be yours. So the <laughs> quote that I read, where there is friction in a relationship, oftentimes it is a lack of boundaries. So if you're feeling friction in an area of your relationship, specifically your blended family marriage, oftentimes it is a lack of boundaries. Do you remember playing the game Red Light, Green Light growing up? I do remember playing Red Light, Green Light. We always used to play it at the roller rink when it was really like, it was like a game in the middle <laughs> of like the intermission or whatever. When the music stopped, we used to play Red Light, Green Light, and that was really hard to play on roller skates. Oh. <laughs> I usually didn't play because I wasn't that good of a roller skater. <laughs> But the game Red Light, Green Light is where the person that's it stands on one side of a field of a roller rink, whatever, and says green light. And that means you are free to come towards the person that's it, towards the finish line, full speed ahead. And then the person that's it yells red light, and that means you have to stop where you're at. And if you don't stop where you're at, you have to go back to the starting line, and then you can continue back and forth until you finally get there. So boundaries kind of reminds me of this game. If I am the person that's having friction in my relationship, usually the per the other person, the other person, the other partner in this relationship is going around like everything's fine. Right. Going on with a green light, everything's fine. And then it gets to the point where, okay, friction, this isn't okay. Things are getting weird. <laughs> and I need to yell red light, red light, red light. But oftentimes that's a hard thing to do. Right. Because that usually means that there's, friction, that there's confrontation, that there's expect, unmet expectations, and things are hard. Right. So that's what a boundary is. It's where you want to yell red light. It's where this is too far. This is uncomfortable. I am not okay in this current situation, and you just want to yell red light. But oftentimes, it's really hard to yell red light. Right. Dwayne, especially in our relationship, he is not <laughs> confrontational at all. And he feels any kind of confrontation <laughs> means that we're fighting. And that's not the case. So when there's friction or confrontation, Dwayne pulls back. So then what happens, and this has happened through trial and error so many times in our marriage, what happens is Dwayne doesn't realize what happened right there is I wanted, I yelled red light or I wanted to yell red light. So he's going along again with a green light and he hits that spot again and the friction starts again and the fights start again. And I'm blaming Dwayne, but it happens both sides. I agree. So what I encourage you guys to do is to figure out what those friction points are so you can put boundaries there where common boundaries need to be placed and where those conversations, how to have those difficult conversations, how to get through those um, uncomfortable points. We'll discuss that in the next couple videos. Right. So why they're important is because it really puts the person that's having the struggle in control. It allows that person to be it and say, red lights, that is too far. You have crossed a line and now I am uncomfortable. Now you are putting me in a position that I am angry, that I am uncomfortable, that I'm frustrated. Right. Red light. And that's why they're so important to have up. But I'm going to caution you now because I feel like this is the perfect time to put it. There are three different types of boundaries and we're going to give you examples <laughs> of all three. The first type of boundary is a caution tape boundary. So I picture like the police lines. Obviously, it's going to serve a different purpose. <laughs> Our crazy neighbor, for whatever reason, has this tape as part of his boundary line of his property. It's like caution tape, literally. He's a little bit weird, but that's what he has, and we respect it. Right. But he has this caution tape. It's not 
firm. <laughs> There's, right. We can literally just kind of walk over it, walk over the top of it. <laughs> if we needed to, we could break through it. It's right. not anything that's really like, this is where I'm drawing the line. This is a line in the sand. It's not a firm boundary where you cannot cross it no matter what the circumstance. Right. It's just kind of be careful. You're treading on a thin line here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a caution here. Maybe I would consider this a yellow light in the game, red light, green light. Tread carefully. Right. You're approaching a boundary. You're either or this could make me a little bit uncomfortable is depending on how we handle it, things like that. So can you think of a caution tape boundary? You always put totally me on the, putting you on the spot. Always puts me on the spot, and then I have to think. So I'm going to give you some hints of a caution tape boundary, and see if you can come up with one on your own. Okay. So that you can actually do some talking during this video. <laughs> you will notice that I don't do a lot of talking. Let's talk about this story when we got our our baby. So Hamilton is our ours. I have three kids. Dwayne has three kids, and we have Hamilton. You guys see Hamilton a lot here on video. He's even got his own theme song. If you've been paying attention, it always plays when he's talked about, and it's probably playing right now. <laughs> so tell the story. How did we get Hamilton? So, well, tell the story in a Reader's Digest version. <laughs> um, Reader's Digest version is we went into a pet store with a sign that said "Adoptions Today." We went in telling everyone we're not getting a pet, we're not getting a pet, we're not getting a pet, and we walked out with him. <laughs> so that would be a caution tape boundary. I think that if Dwayne and I were honest, we were open to the idea of getting a dog. Yeah. We, it was. wasn't something, we both are dog people. We both have had dogs in our previous marriages, and our previous relationships. As adults, I don't think there was a lot of time that either of us didn't have animals in our home. Right. And we were in a situation where we had just gotten married and we didn't have any animals aside from the ones that we birthed <laughs> in our home. <laughs> so it wasn't, it was, it was a caution tape boundary. Um, we were both open to the idea, but we had to approach with caution. Right. And we walked out with Hamilton. Um, that story is for another time. That is just a perfect example of a caution tape boundary. Right. We're not going to be crazy and get 16 million dogs <laughs> as much as I would like to. <laughs> I think we're both intelligent enough and smart enough that there is a boundary to the amount of dogs that we can get or the amount of animals that we can have in our home, given the circumstances. But again, it is a caution tape boundary. Right. Do you agree? I agree. So there's three types of boundaries. First is a caution tape boundary. Second type is a picket fence boundary. A picket fence is a little bit more secure than a caution tape. If you can picture it, you can't rip it apart to get through it. You probably, depending on the height of it, you probably can't step over it. You need to find a gate. But there's still slats <laughs> where things can get through. There's still, it's not really, it's not going to keep a lot of people out. It might keep a dog in, but it's not going to keep a lot of people out. Um, it's not forbearing. It's not foreboding. It's not in any way anything that you can't somehow get through or across. Right. But it's more of a red light than a green light in the red light, green light right. analogy. Mm -hmm. So some ideas of picket fence boundaries. Early on, Dwayne told me about a pastor friend. I don't know if you followed him, if you served under him. I don't know how he knew this pastor friend. He read about it that wouldn't even have a woman in his office because he didn't have windows on his office door. So he would never be seen alone without a, with a woman. And when he told me that, we were dating. I don't even think we were married. And when he told me that, I thought of all of the circumstances that I was alone with another man when I was married to my previous husband. Mm -hmm. And it occurred to me that I was like, hey, that might be something that I need. Like, I, I can't, I don't know how to approach that. And that was something that when we first got married, Dwayne and I discussed that. And that was definitely a boundary that needed to be put in place. Right. And you might think that's a barbed wire boundary, <laughs> but there have been circumstances where it was definitely necessary for me or him to be alone with another woman. Right. I think about our pastors. Right. Um, we have been, I, I have been in meetings with other pastors, just me and him one-on-one -on -one, and there were text messages being sent. Hey, just letting you know, I'm going into a meeting with this guy right. coming out here. That was the boundary that was put up complete and total disclosure. Right. Um, Facebook oftentimes yep. is a picket fence boundary. Right. If Dwayne friend, I'm sorry, you were going to say, gonna say um, Megan is really good about if she's friend requesting um, a, another guy, even if it's someone that we go, that we go to church with. Mm -hmm. hey, even I'm, if it's a mutual friend between right, us. Right. Um, hey, just want to let you know, full disclosure, I'm, friend requesting or, you know, this guy friend requested me um, and I'll do the same thing. Hey, you know, um, like I said, and, and even though it's someone that we both have 
we go to church with. It's a mutual friend. It's just the respect for her as my wife and just letting her, hey, I am friend requesting um, this person. So a lot of the picket fence boundaries I see on social media, those really need to be put in place. Right. Social media should not be a green light. It should not be a caution tape. Right. It really probably should be a picket fence in a healthy relationship. Right. If there's issues, <laughs> if there's problems, if there's disagreements, then that's when it needs to escalate to the third type of boundary right. that we're discussing. As opposed to a caution tape or a picket fence boundary, this type of boundary is a barbed wire boundary. You're not getting over this. You're not getting through it. You're not getting Getting around it, I picture those the prison two chain link fences, yeah. you know, twelve feet in the air, lined with barbed wire on the top and the bottom. These boundaries are not being crossed. End of story. Right. These are often the ones that once it's crossed, it's hard to go back and start again. Right. It's hard to go back to the green light position and start again because trust is broken right. once those boundaries are crossed. The problem is that a lot of times those boundaries are not defined. Right. You might be walking the line of that barbed wire boundary and you don't even have any idea. Right. And oops, you stepped across it. And now you have crossed boundaries that are breaking trusts, that are breaking hearts, that are breaking so many things. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about more about specific examples with that. But can you think of some barbed wire boundaries that we have? So for us, I really think it goes back to relationships with the opposite sex. I can think of a time right after we had gotten married. Megan, when we first got married, we weren't living together. And... Um, we were living like 1,500 right. miles apart, not right. just not living okay. together. We weren't even in the same, like, time zone. <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, I had to, I borrowed someone's pickup truck to get some bicycles for the kids, and I hadn't discussed that first with Megan, and we had to work through that. We did have to work through that. That was definitely something um, without hurting anybody else or talking about anything else. I have crossed some lines too in, in our marriage where that was a barbed wire fence. Right. That was a barbed wire boundary. And those are often the ones that you really need to get on your knees and pray together to get through those when those boundaries are crossed. So those are the three types of boundaries. Um, again, just to review, we have the caution tape boundaries, we have the picket fence boundaries, and then we have the barbed wire boundaries. And those three boundaries are so important to establish in your marriage and in your relationship and talk about them when they're not a source of contention. Right. Be able to take a step back and say, okay, what areas am I feeling this friction? And say, oh, that's an area where I'm feeling friction. How can I put a boundary in place in order to eliminate that? We're going to talk about this more in the next couple of episodes, specific types of boundaries, how to communicate. Okay, stop. Red light. How to communicate that effectively so that way you guys can talk about the boundary being put in place. So stay tuned in the next couple of episodes. Thank you so much for watching. We so Thanks, appreciate everyone. you guys. Um, be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, everywhere that we may be. That It's all in the comments in the description mm -hmm. of this video. And don't forget to ring the bell so that you get notified when new videos do come out right. and you can learn more about boundaries with us. And what else do I want to say? I think that's all. I think that's it. So we'll see you guys again next week. See you guys Bye next guys. week. Bye guys. Love you. Bye.